Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. I have this journal that was originally made as a dream journal, and I still do use it for that. I remember when I made this, I made several. I can't, maybe it was three. Um, Sandra, I was thinking you got one of these. I don't know, I could be wrong, but I have, um, I have, I have written quite a few dreams in here. This very first page says, remember to wake up slowly and actively recall your dreams. Uh, and, oh, I think I sold with these journals. I think each one had a little butterfly stone with it. Um, anyway, I've, I've always dreamed really vivid dreams until, I don't know, I had a stretch after I left my... Um, 23 year marriage where my dreams kind of went away and uh, so I know someone who is a life coach and she's uh, like a Reiki um, therapist or master or whatever you call it and just very intuitive she said that sometimes our dreams leave us when we're processing trauma and that could be uh, my dreams have come back to me a little bit. It could be my age, too. I don't know. It could be the hours that I sleep. I don't sleep as much as I used to. Well, I take naps if I need it. But it um, seems like as I get older, I can get by with six hours of sleep at night. I used to never be that way. Uh, I digress. I mean, when you have children, you do what you have to do. Uh, but I feel better I can, I can get up on six hours of sleep and not feel like I've been run over. Um, it used to be that if I only got six hours sleep, I felt horrible. So I'm still using this for dreams. Uh, I have things documented in here, but I'm kind of in the mood to just uh, make an art journal page. And I thought I, I felt kind of in a slump when I got home as far as making anything but I did want to create, so I said, well, I will use my great formula where we just do, um, you know, G for the ground floor, and I'm going to add a lot of different purples to this page. I've been in a mood for purple also. So let's get a ground floor going. And this can be like a journal prompt if you want to use it for that. So if you don't like purple, pick a different color, but let's just say, uh, go through your art supplies and pick things with the color purple to start with. And we can add all sorts of things. These are gelatos, Faber-Castell, I love these. They're kind of like crayons, and then they break down with water. They move around with water. So they're a lot of fun to use to add color to a page. Now, it has never bothered me, uh, for the most part, if my color goes over to the next page. I think it just adds to the journal, but I'm, I'm kind of messy like that. So, you know, you can put something between the pages if you need to. I'm going to have to change that water. So we've got these purples, and what else do I have? Let's look at maybe, uh, and I, I'm gonna change this water real quickly. I don't like that it looks so muddy. Okay, sorry about that. Let's look at some of these, um, really shimmery paints over here. I'm trying to get that to lay flat. I wonder if we can add, we might need to dry where we are right now. We not, might need to dry this layer and then, but that is adding some shimmer to the top. Oh, and I kind of like that. Just, I notice there's some purple there. Two different colors, but they're very similar. And you can see here, there's a next page over there. Let me dry this a little bit. Uh, 
Okay, I like that. I like that you can see some shimmery marks. The page is not completely dry, but it's close enough. Uh, we can stop there with the ground floor level and just let that be, um, let's just say, wait, I just spotted something. Hmm, I've been wondering about these. Windsor and Newton watercolors. I think we might have to try this. I found several of these um, tubes of watercolor at the thrift store, and I've never tried watercolors like this, and I'm probably gonna use them completely wrong. I've never used these before. Uh, do they come out? Oh, look at that, and I guess you add water. Let's try that, ultramarine. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, that's kind of a blue. Looks purple on here. Oh, but isn't that gorgeous? You know what we'll do? We will let some of this just run right down the page. Oh, that's so pretty. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous color. That's a really brilliant color. Uh, what others do I have? Got this uh, lemon yellow and Payne's gray, cobalt blue, burnt umber. Interesting, light red. I pulled these out. Um, I was doing some, not necessarily cleaning out, but just going through uh, some of the drawers and boxes that I have because I forget what I have. And I pulled these out. So this is crimson and raw sienna. Look at these beautiful colors. And I'm okay that it's just kind of everywhere. We're not doing um, any kind of specific you know, we're not trying to paint a sunset or a desert scene or a, a commissioned portrait. This is just, this is just a play page. So let me dry that a little bit. Okay, great. We've got the ground floor. Now R is for repeating pattern. And for this part, let's, let's let the prompt be to find something from your trash or recycle or your scrap pile that you can cut a piece from and that has some sort of shape. Even if you just take a random piece of paper and tear it into a square, maybe something that you can put on an ink pad or something that you can paint and then lay it down to get some repeating patterns. Um, what color do I want in here? That blue is so gorgeous. I'm wondering if I want to stick with the blue and purple. You know, I've been hooked on this metallic. That's kind of close to that. Let's stay with that dark blue. That uh, ended up being so beautiful. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this on my uh, palette or whatever it's called. Let me dry this brush off a little bit. And let's just kind of paint the surface of this and see what this does as far as making a repeating pattern. Ooh, that's nice. I like that. So for your repeating pattern, just grab something out of the trash or recycle or, um, you know, a shape. It can be a spool of thread that's empty that you can dip in a color and make repeating patterns. So let's just, um, let's stop there. Let's don't go too crazy. And I'm going to dry this a little bit. Okay, we're going to say that's good enough. I still see some thick areas there. So we have the ground floor repeating pattern, and then E is for ephemera. And I think 
for the ephemera. For the ephemera, I went to my scrap paper box. This is an offcut from a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, and of course I was probably making a journal that was more like eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper required. Uh, so let's, you know, why don't you use this as like a, what they call a scrap, scrap buster or whatever. Um, go to your scrap pile and get some pieces of paper. You can pick the ones in your color palette or you don't have to do that. And let's tear off about five sheets of paper. Now I happen to see this stack of gorgeous old um, cigar labels that Amy sent to me. Oh my gosh, even the back on that is amazing. You can see the reverse image of that. And that kind of folds over. I wonder, that kind of just tears right off. Amy, I love these. Thank you so much. And I know you're, you said you were tempted to come see us this weekend. Jay and I are meeting up this weekend, and I am so excited. I took off the whole weekend for work. Uh, so let's tear off. Did I give a number? Maybe I said five, but it doesn't. Let's just do an odd number of scraps here. So we've got... And they kind of, they don't match the color necessarily, but that's okay. We're going to count this as one. We've got one, two, three, four. Let's do one more. I'm never going to use this little notepad, but let's tear the, uh, the flower part out. And maybe we can glue it on. So let me get my, uh, my glue here, this Beacon all-purpose tacky glue. I've got to buy some actual real-life tacky glue out. And let's just glue these down. This has plenty in it. Uh, I love tacky glue. I, I like glue that's really thick. And this reminds me of just the tacky glue that I'm used to having. I was surprised to see this at the Dollar Tree. And of course, that's a tiny container for $1.25. But, you know, if you need it, you need it. So let's put this in the center. And this one, I'm going to keep a straight edge on that. It actually goes that way. We don't really care about the upside down thing all the time, but I think I am going to put it the way it actually is supposed to go as far as orientation. And let's put this here along the edge. And lay that down, just flush with the edge. That's two of our pieces. And let's get some glue on here. Today was kind of stressful at work. I, I still love my job. I Maybe I'm crazy because I do like retail and maybe I'm especially crazy because I'm enjoying working at the cash register, but I forgot that it was President's Day and everybody must have been off work today. I just was not quite prepared for the number of people who were shopping and I could go on a rant. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that I drive people crazy sometimes. Uh, so I, I, I won't go on a rant. I'm just gonna say that sometimes when we're shopping and I'm gonna include myself in this, so that I don't sound like I'm being condescending because I know that I make these same mistakes or have made these same or assumptions or, you know, just been aggravating or whatever. Um, you know, when you're a customer, in a way, you're like, the, you're the center of the universe because you're spending your money to shop in the store and we appreciate that. Um, but on the other hand, you're not the center of the universe. Uh, so many people come to the register completely unprepared. And I don't ever want to do this again. After working in a place that is just, that revolves around coupons, you know, don't wait until you're at the cash register to completely update your app. If you have an app for the store, don't wait until you're at the register to check to see if you have your wallet. Or don't wait until you're at the register to create 
an account or an app. Um, we have people who are waiting in line and they see other people ahead of them who have the app and have coupons. So when they get to the register, they say, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to download the app. It'll only take me a minute. Well, it doesn't just take a minute because you have to create an account. Oh, I'm just, I'm exhausted from today. I'm exhausted from today. Um, and again, I, I love being at the registers. I love the customers. I love hearing what people are working on. I love, I, I try to look at people as if they are me. I try to say, okay, when I go into a store, I know how I want to be treated. And I come into the store with all of my myself, my problems, you know, um, maybe worried about money, maybe worried about one of my children, maybe worried about somebody who's sick. And I carry that, all of that is a part of who I am. And I know how it lifts my spirits when somebody is nice to me. So I try to remember each person that comes to the register, how would I want to be treated? And you don't know what this person is going through. Um, anyway, so let's get back to this. But, you know, don't wait until you're at the cash register with a line behind you to download an app. I'm going to take the rest of what's on this brush. I'm glad I didn't put it in the water. And I'm going to use some of the same color that we painted the ephemera with to ink up the edges of some of these sheets of paper. So... I'm glad I didn't do that. If you have your brush close by with the color you used, you know, add a few, add a few spots to blend that ephemera in with the page. So ephemera really means something that doesn't last forever. That's why these beautiful old things that we love, we call, it's ephemeral. We call it ephemera because it's ticket stubs, it's photographs. It's playbills, it's uh, old letters, things that really don't last forever. They're very special in the moment. Um, but we all know, you know, we're like on an inside club. Not everybody knows how wonderful these old things are. Um, but for the sake of doing a, uh, like an art journal page, let ephemera be anything like, you can use your scrapbook paper, you can use any kind of paper. We could have used, um, this for that matter and we might use we might use that so we've got the ground floor we've got a repeating pattern we've got ephemera now a is for art and art is something that you create yourself a lot of times i like to draw like a little face or you know just something and you don't have to do that art could also be something that you make with one of your stamps you could, um, you could take a piece of paper. Let's say we want to stay with a color that really fits on here. And I love the blues and the purples. But this kind of, that plum color is really pretty. And that's an alcohol pen. We won't use that yet, but let's go with... We have a gelato that's sort of a, a nice rosy color. So let's take a piece of paper. And this is our artwork. And I'm going to color this up in the center. You know, you don't have to be able to draw to add this step. And I'm going to dry this a little bit. I have the most vivid memory of being, I had to be young. I was probably about four years old um, because I was sitting in my mom's lap in a car and my dad was going into the bank and I think my sister was basically a baby. And I thought my mother had the most beautiful hands I had ever seen. Um, she had the most beautiful handwriting. She has the most beautiful handwriting, but I'm, she's still around. Thank goodness. I love her so much. I don't want to think about ever being without her. She's left-handed. She has the most beautiful handwriting, but I'm thinking past tense. You know, to me, back it, little, she was magical to me. And she was just doodling on a piece of paper. And she was making these really pretty flowers with just this sort of ragged edge at the end. And mama, I'm sorry. I know this is not as beautiful as what you were doing, but you know, 
as a four-year-old sitting in your lap, this was like the most beautiful thing ever. And I, I don't remember... You know, there were no cell phones then. So I don't remember what... I don't know how long we were in the car. Couldn't have been that long. I think it was First Citizens Bank on US-1 in Southern Pines, which is, it's just crazy. Anyway, she made this pretty little flower. I know it was prettier than that, but you don't have to be able to do art to add things to your art journals. And the more you practice, the more beautiful things will be, or the more you will, well, they're gonna be beautiful no matter what, but the more you will figure out what you like and what you don't like. So I'm gonna take this marker, this alcohol marker, and kind of color in the petals. Uh, it's looking red. Look at that color. But on top of on top of that other color we used, it looks kind of red. And that's funny because my little granddaughter Addie, she was at the house. I'll put a picture in here of her sitting at the end of the hallway at her art desk. Uh, we had a conversation about mixing colors. Let's go back over some of this. Well, I kind of like that bright color. What if we put just one little stripe in some of these? And I want to get, I wonder if there's a black one. Let's get the, um, oh no, you know what I want to use? I've got um, some different calligraphy pens. That's an interesting one. So I'm going to write this is where. My. Dreams. Live. You know, a good exercise sometimes is just to write whatever comes to your mind. Um, you would be surprised sometimes at what what you're thinking uh, that you didn't know was there. Uh, Jason and I often tell each other our dreams, and as soon as I came home from work today, which I I love him so much. I love him more, like not just every day, but like every minute. He is such a good man, and after being through what I've been through. Um, it's just so nice to have somebody who is just kind, just, just kind. And anyway, we always greet each other, you know, how are you? How was your day? It's good to see you. And it's just genuine. It's, I'm so happy to see him. Uh, but he was telling me when I got home from work and was putting everything down, he said, I had the craziest dream last night and you were in it. So he told me his dream and anyway, this is where my dreams live. I'm still gonna write my dreams in here, and we're gonna consider this our artwork. For some reason, I kind of like it kind of in the center here. So I folded it where that can fit, you know, where the page fold is or whatever, and we're gonna take our glue again. Let's shake that to the bottom. Oh my gosh. Jay, I can't wait to see you. <laughs> this will be, what, our third outing together, and I'm going to come see you at some point. I've already made up my mind. Um, Lord willing, and I'm still alive, I'm going to be actual true retirement age in one year and one month. And I don't know if you'll be living in the same place, but I want to come to where you live and get myself a nice hotel room, and I want to see the sights, and I want us to go out to eat. I want to buy you dinner. I want to um, come to where you are. This will be the third time that Jay and I, we met up in um, Greenville, South Carolina, for a quilt show. What was that, like three years ago? 
And then last year, we had an art retreat where quite a few people came. I met Kim. I met Amy. I met Lori. I met Judy. Uh, Jay came for that. I, I mean, there were so many people there. Local people. There were local people who came in. Uh, I'm leaving out some names. But the point is, you know, Jay came for that. And then we're going to be together this weekend going to Quilt Con and hanging out and doing artwork. So this is where my dreams live. I want to say also don't be afraid of your handwriting. If you think your handwriting is ugly, um, it's not. Just, just do your thing. So here we have, we have the ground floor repeating pattern. We have ephemera which is what we're calling the paper, and then we have artwork. And then the T in great is for texture. And I think I am gonna come back and use a little bit of this. Ooh, I like that down in the corner already. I miss my tacky glue. I mean, this is tacky glue, but I miss having one of my upside down containers that's always ready to go. I'm gonna be nice and use my um, little glue thing. Look, somebody said this is a well-loved glue. Look, it looks like a birdhouse. <laughs> it's so hilarious. Look at all the glue built up on that. But I didn't pay much attention to it until somebody pointed out that it really had some glue on it. And it really does. And I like it. This is the way I feel sometimes. This is like all the memories and life that is stuck to me from the things I've been through. Okay, so let's put some texture on the page. We may have to come back and add some more. I see those layers of cardboard are tearing apart a little bit. Um, if you want to cut out a shape, I'm looking for my scissors. My poor little scissors. Let's see if we can kind of freehand do some kind of a star. And even if it's not shaped perfectly, we know it's a star. It's kind of like everything else we've been talking about. Our artwork, our handwriting, ourselves, we're all stars. So I wonder if I can put this somewhere. Maybe right up here. It needs to, like, the layers, the more layers, the better. And just like this, you know, we've sat down with this little formula. And me personally, I felt a little bit blocked because of the day. I worked seven hours today solely at the cash register. I only took a 15-minute break. And I had a wonderful day, but you just sometimes feel drained after the day. I came home, I talked to my Jason, and I took just like a cat nap. I really did take a cat nap because the cats came and they, um, Vlad, like just basically laid on my chest while I was resting. But then just using a formula, you know, We've got our ground floor, which was one color. The repeating pattern was taking just a piece of anything close by, dipping it in a color, whether it's paint, an ink pad, uh, you know, going over it with some sort of ink that's going to go onto the page. We have our artwork, which doesn't have to be anything fancy at all. Um, well, we have the ephemera, which is the paper, and then we have the texture. Um, and it doesn't have to stop there. You, you know, this gets you started. And I do think for this last layer, I want to add some white um, paint splatters. This thing's almost empty. This is Dollar Tree acrylic. And I know I talked recently about, ooh, look at that, buying some better paints. And I see I laid my scissors in that paint. I'm so messy. My mom can tell you. My mama loves me. I know she does. But I was the messy one. I couldn't manage to close um, like my closet doors or if I pulled a drawer open. I, I don't know. It's just the way I'm wired. 
I don't want to get this all over everything out here. And that's what's going to happen. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be really smart and I'm going to lay this right here so I can splatter all I want to. And it, look, it's going on here. Isn't that nice? So you don't have to stop once you kind of get in the groove. Gracie, I know you said something about me doing this on my fingers. I don't remember. And I think you take something and like hit it over the top of that. Let's do that too. And we have all these beautiful paint splatters. I love it so much. Now let's move this. And then we have our little art page. So this is such a beautiful backdrop. When I come back to this, maybe I'll, you know, sometimes if I'm short on time, I will type my dream or my daily entry on the typewriter and then print it out. Not the typewriter, but the computer. I do want a typewriter though. Uh, so if I come back with something, I could make a pocket to put it in. I could glue it on the page. Uh, my dear future sister-in-law, she already feels like a sister. She always says to always date everything. So you could come back with a black pen, which we already have one out. And let's just hide the date somewhere. Like, what is it today? It's two. I don't know if it's the 19th or the 20th, but does it really matter? I mean, when I'm gone and somebody looks back on this, one day is not going to make a difference. So the date's on here. And I'm going to stop for now because Jason's teaching tonight. I've got glue all over my hands. And he's probably about to finish up with his lesson. So I'm going to stop for now. And that's the art journal prompt for today. I love the way it turned out. And I will see you really soon. In the meantime, let's just have a look around the workshop. <laughs> it's filling up again. You know, I cleaned out in such a drastic way. And oh, this feels so good right here. It feels so good, the heat, it's cold outside. Uh, but things come in again a little at a time. Carolyn, look at the beautiful doll. She sits where I can see her every day. I brought one of my extra Christmas trees out and I put Valentine's on it. But Mary, I also have a lot of the beautiful things you made for me. I have dried flowers. I just love it out here. And Kim, if you ever check in, I've got all of these gorgeous old dolls that Ken found and sent to me. Let's see, I hate to make anybody feel sick, but let's pan around. There is, there's a doll up there and one over there. So many beautiful things. There are the angel wings up there that Mary made. And this, oh my goodness. So my little granddaughter, Addie and I, we painted that together when she was here over the weekend. I'm gonna keep it inside where it doesn't get messed up. And then uh, Kim and Ken, if you ever tune in, there are a couple more dolls that you sent. Anyway, oh, and these are my babies. My four babies. I don't know if you've ever seen them all together. I had three boys and then a girl. That picture is 10 years old, older, 11, 12 years old. But they're still my babies. Anyway, okay, well, let's go ahead and end this, and I will see you really soon. Bye for now.